Thank you for that introduction, Simon. Um, it was very nice meeting you last night, too, even if you called me Jem at one point instead of Jen. So I just want to mention that. Uh, <laughs> he had had a few glasses of wine. It's totally fine. Um, so yes, this talk is called React is Fiction. And as mentioned, I am Jen. Um, I have been described as very cool at programming uh, by my director of engineering, so does it count? Meh. Uh, and I'm currently a front-end architect at a company called The Wing. Uh, we build co-working spaces that are geared towards women. We actually just opened up our first European location in London. Um, and I also co-organize a meetup in NYC called Use React NYC. It's obviously a meetup for fellow React enthusiasts in NYC. If you are ever there, uh, please come check us out. We would love to have you. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, my handle is girlcode, girl with a U. Now, I'm actually really amazed to be on stage today because I started my career on a very different path. You see, I've been writing for as long as I can remember. I even owned a typewriter at eight years old. I begged for it for Christmas. And I would sit in my room, crafting characters, designing plot lines, and dreaming of the day I would be a published writer. In college, I majored in English and creative writing. And later, I worked days as a paralegal while earning my MFA in creative writing part time. OK, well, I only earned a third of it. Uh, I did drop out of the, pro of the program. Um, so people tell you you're going to be a starving artist, but it really does not sink in until you get your first student loan bill. And I had to leave the program. I just honestly couldn't afford it. To be honest, I don't regret this at all, because growing up, I had a secondary interest, and that was code. So I left creative writing to pursue engineering. And it's a way longer story than that. These are the cliff notes. But what's important is the transition. Because people, you know, whether fellow engineers or not, are often really surprised by my background. To them, these two disciplines, writing and coding, don't really match up. And for a long time, I actually thought so too. So when I decided to pursue engineering, I put everything I knew about creative writing in a box, and I closed the lid. Years went by, and I left the box alone. So three years of working with Vanilla.js, jQuery, Angular 1, box stayed closed. And then about five years ago, I started writing React. And immediately, there was this affinity. React to me felt like coming home. It was so familiar, and in a way, I really couldn't pinpoint. But I also felt a really strange tension with it. How I wrote components, it just felt not right. It felt off. And you know, here I am. I'm following the conventional wisdom on what makes a good component, and it felt wrong. And I really couldn't figure it out for a long time. For years, I couldn't figure it out. And then one day, the light bulb went off. Writing React reminds me of writing fiction. That's why I'm so comfortable with it. And I'm violating creative writing principles. And that's why this feels so wrong. So I started writing components with the creative writing principles in mind. And what I found was leaning into what I knew about writing well helped me write better components, like show, don't tell. So show, don't tell is one of the fundamental tenets of creative writing. In fact, it's known as the golden rule. So its purpose is to encourage description over exposition, show being the description and tell being the exposition. So if we look at a sentence like she is tired, we can identify this as exposition or telling. So this sentence is instructional. View the character as tired. That's the instruction. And that's the basis of telling. It's providing instructions on how to view something. It's direct. But showing is indirect. Her footsteps are heavier than before, the weight increasing as she trudges towards the bed, collapsing face first onto the mattress. So this is a dramatic shift from exposition to description. You still know the character is tired, but that information is from context. And notice that you can feel it more. 
Words like trudges, descriptions of heaviness, collapsing. You can feel the character's tiredness. And that's why writers rely on this rule. It pulls the reader in. It lets them feel what's happening. And what I love about Show Don't Tell is how it maps to React's declarative, not imperative approach. So telling is instructional. Imperative code instructs. Showing is descriptive. Declarative code describes. When I talk about the comfort that I feel with React, its declarativeness is a large part of that. And when I talk about the tension I felt coming from a writing background, it's because I knew at some level that how I wrote components violated show, don't tell. And this was true of other tenets of creative writing as well. Because again, I thought that writing code and writing fiction had nothing in common. So I'm going to take you through what happens when you take these tenets into consideration when building a component. And I also want to illustrate how thin the divide is between writing and coding. So here's what we're going to write. It is a navigation header or nav bar. And depending on whether the user is logged in or not, they're going to see a different UI. So for the logged out users, there's two links, spaces and happenings, and the login sign up links. If the user is logged in, there are now three links, home, happenings, and community, as well as an avatar and a drop down menu that appears when you hover on that avatar. Now, one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to start to determine what individual components we need. Writers do this as well. So Joyce Carol Oates has this really lovely advice, be alert for the possibilities of paragraphing. I really love that sentence. And what it's pointing to is structure. Writers focus on structure. There is an art to grouping words and sentences, to creating breaks in paragraphs and in dialogue. And this can be said of components as well. So when we're looking at this design, we're looking for the possibilities of paragraphing. What should be a component? Now, one possible component breakdown for this is that we're going to make a nav bar component. And then separately, we're going to make a profile dropdown component. And I think this is OK for now, so we're just going to go with it and see where we get. And we're going to start to build these components out. Now, we're not going to build it all at first, actually. We're going to put in some placeholder pieces. So what I'm interested in seeing here is the structure that we create and noting what information we're going to need. So first, uh, we're going to be holding our navigation inside of a div, and that's going to be the main container element. We're going to put a placeholder for the logo for now. And then below that, we're going to place a nav element. And let's leave a placeholder for the links. We're going to deal with those in a minute. But now we're left to decide to sh you know, how to show which UI. You know, If they're logged in or logged out, they're going to see something a little bit different. So how do we determine what they're going to see? And our best option here is that we're going to use a prop to denote whether the user is logged in or not. So if the, log, the user is logged out, we're going to show the login and sign up links. And if the user is logged in, we're going to show the avatar. Now, looking at this, what we've created here is a terrible first draft. All good writers write terrible first drafts. This is how they end up with good second drafts and terrific third drafts. OK, I really love this. And I love this because it says, all writers, all. And she goes on to say, people tend to look at successful writers who are getting their books published and think that they sit down at their desks every morning feeling like a million dollars, feeling great about who they are and the story they have to tell and how much talent they have, and that they take in a few deep breaths, push back their sleeves, and dive in, typing fully formed passages as fast as a court reporter. But this is just the fantasy of the uninitiated. So you are now initiated, and let's not pretend. We all write terrible first drafts, all of us. Which means that this isn't going to work. We're going to need to take a second look. Now, we don't just throw out what we did. Uh, second drafts build on first, and third drafts build on second. So the real question in here is, what are we going to rework? 
what are we going to keep? What are, are we going to actually change? Now, if we're following the principles of creative writing, I can tell you that we already have a violation. It may not be very obvious at first because this is a very bare bones component, but we have violated something. And it's a little bit clearer if we look at it like this. So this is our navigation component in use. And as we previously outlined, we're going to need that is logged in prop. So is logged in is our instruction to the component. And it's telling it to render a certain UI, which means that we violated show don't tell. We violated real quick. And I see this problem often. We use props like is something or has something to denote what to render. We use if else statements and ternary expressions to say render this, now that. And it's all conditionally rendering our UI. But we should be breaking these out into separate components. Looking at the designs, we think that there is enough in common between these two that we can reuse the same component for both. And I totally understand that thought. I have thought that thought. And the reason that I have thought that is because I've been trained to look at components like this, distilling specific parts down into generic pieces. What you see here is the similarities. Both designs have logos, links, and some other piece of functionality towards the right. And this, by the way, is a really good technique for understanding component architecture. But it's not the whole story. Because every character should want something, even if it's only a glass of water. What we're defining here is character motivations, what the character wants or needs. Narratives are not formed from plot. What's happening around your characters is actually less important than what those characters want or need and how that aligns with their behavior and their actions. We are completely willing as readers to ignore unrealistic situations, but we will not ignore unrealistic behavior or actions from our characters. We know when they don't line up with their motivations. It kicks us out of the story. And that's why this isn't the whole story, because we aren't considering the motivations of these components. If we look at the shared motivations, what each component wants to give the user, we find there's actually not much in common at all. The differences actually outweigh the similarities. And that means that this should be two components, not one. So in our second draft, we're going to create two components, a logged out navigation and a logged in navigation. Now, to save some time here, I'm going to pretend that we already have a lo logo component for us just to drop in. And now that that's done and we've decided on some structure, we're going to move forward and focus on the navigation links. Now, one option here is to create a reusable nav component that can be used for both the logged out and the logged in navigations. Now, to do that, of course, we're going to have to dynamically compose the links. Because remember that logged in and logged out navigations are different here. So as a logged out user, you're going to see spaces and happenings. But as a logged in user, you see home happenings and community. So there's a difference here in both content and in length. Now, that's why we're going to rely on using an array of objects. And each object is going to define the link's name and its to link. And then in our reusable component, we're going to use the array to create the links. So for each object in the array, we return a link component with that object's to and name values. And what's really nice about this approach is that we're limiting repetitive code. It solves for the unknown as well, because it can be dynamically creating the links. So this component can be reused no matter how many links there are or what their content is which is really convenient, because when we're looking at our design, it's full of links. We have spaces, happenings, home, happening, but we also have profile settings and logged out. So we think we can get a lot of reuse out of this one small component. In fact, we're going to use it for our next piece, those login and sign up links. So we're going to start to create our array of objects. And OK, we, we have one small hiccup. Um, because the login link, it, it actually isn't a link. Um, it actually opens a modal. OK, so we have to make a decision here. We have this nice reusable component, but incorporating this is going to take some changes. So do we want to do that? 
Looking at our design, though, what we want to incorporate makes sense. We want this component to work for all the links. And if we look at the menu and the dropdown, we're going to have these same needs, you know, profile and setting, they're true links, but logged out, it's going to be performing an action. It'll log the user out and redirect to another page. So we actually do need this functionality. So we're going to go ahead with our revisions. So we're going to add an on-click key, and it's going to store a function as its value. Now, in our reusable nav, we're going to look for the two key, for the on-click key, and if it, oh, no, sorry, the two-click key. And if we pass it, uh, if it exists, we're going to pass back a link component. Otherwise, we're going to pass back a button because it's got the on-click. And we're going to specify that as our specified function uh, to handle the click. So now we're going to add another reusable nav to our navigation component. And notice that we're passing down both the nav links and what I'm calling the action links. Uh, so we're getting maximum reuse out of this component as well. So if the logged out navigation needs to be reused with different links, we can totally do that. OK, so everything that I just went to uh, is actually kind of a little bit of a trick. Um, this is the part where I tell you what we think we did and what we actually did are not the same thing. Because we think while we were doing this that we created two reusable components. But here's what we actually did. We chose an abstraction to make things dry. And then we kept that abstraction, expanding it to take on more and more outcomes because we value reuse. It is how we weigh a component's worth. It is also how we unintentionally create components that are difficult to use, difficult to understand, and difficult to change, which is why you should write what you know. So write what you know is arguably the most well-known tenet of creative writing, and it is often misinterpreted. It doesn't mean that you just look around you and you write what is there. It means you write what you know to be true. Applied to components, this is even more concrete. If you know what a component needs and what it should render, then write what you know. I used to value reuse above all else. I thought components needed to be as reusable and configurable as possible. And what I ended up doing is wasting time on problems that never appeared. So if we write what we know, this is what our logged out navigation looks like. I find this cleaner, easier to understand, and more prepared for the unknowns. So imagine that the design changes, and now we need to add an icon next to the happenings link. With our previous abstraction, we would have needed to modify the object's details to include an icon key. And in the reusable nav, we would have needed to check for that key and conditionally add an icon, all for one icon being added to the design. And you can also see that this doesn't take long for this abstraction to break down. It's fine for one or two use cases, but as you add in more, it's creating more complexity than it's solving. But if we don't commit to this abstraction, if we write what we know, the modification is one step. Add the icon to the happenings link. That's it. Now, the downside to this approach is that you are going to be repeating yourself. And I know that we are trained to keep things dry. Don't repeat yourself. But repetition is not your enemy. Writers know this. His heart was going like mad, and yes, I said, yes, I will, yes. I adore this line. It is the last line of James Joyce's Ulysses, which is, by the way, like impossible to read, but also really lovely. Um, Joyce's use of repetition here, the word yes coming back again and again, is masterful. It gives this sense of like hope and anticipation. And without this, without that, you know, this sentence is really ordinary. It is nothing special. It is the repetition that makes this so masterful and worthwhile. Honestly, it's the reason you should read Ulysses is to get to this line. It's going to take you a while, but it's worth it, I promise. Um, so writers know that repetition is a tool. Repetition of words, phrases, descriptions. Writers use these to create emphasis, to create structure, to build on the previous. 
writers repeat on purpose. And this is a lesson we can use in our components. Repeat on purpose. Repeat because you want to avoid the naive abstraction. Writing a component as a mechanism to dry your code is often just that. Very few writers really know what they are doing until they have done it. We often pick abstractions well before we actually know what we're doing. That's why write what you know and repeat on purpose are useful guidelines as you start out. And this is true of writers as well. So these rules that I've mentioned, these tenets, they, they act as guidance for improving as a writer. Think of them as the training wheels to keep you upright, if nothing else. The true balancing is always going to come later with experience. Now, I have some more to say on this, but first, I want us to finish what we started. Uh, there's one more piece to write, and that's the avatar and the drop-down menu in the logged-in navigation. So recall that back at the start, we wanted to make this a separate component. And I actually think that's still the right move here. So here is our user dropdown. It's going to encompass a separate avatar component pre-built for us. Thank you. And we're going to need some state here to track whether the dropdown is open or not. And then we're going to set the avatar's on hover handler to toggle that state. If the dropdown is open, we're going to render a nav element. And for the links, we're going to continue to write what we know. So this is our finished user dropdown. So we're going to add it to our logged in navigation, and we are now done. We can move that ticket to the done column. And now what? Now we move on. Remember that sooner or later, before it ever reaches perfection, you will have to let it go and move on and start to write the next thing. Like writers, we often need to move on before what we've written is anywhere near perfect. Our time is finite, which often means that from time to time, we are revisiting our old imperfect code, a component we aren't particularly proud of, a snippet of code you can now see should be written differently. And we might feel unease about refactoring these, because it's an admission that something didn't work. But rewriting is the essence of writing well. No work of fiction that you have ever read came without the cost of painful, sacrificial revision. Really, if you think I am kidding or exaggerating, writers hate revision. They would rather do anything else than revise their work. It is painful. It is so horrid. But they know that it's the path forward. You cannot improve without it. Refactoring is not failure. Get comfortable with it. Take something you built and rebuild it, then figure out why it's better or worse. Take something someone else built and rebuild it, figure out why it's better or worse. I could tell you to follow all of what I've said here as gospel, but you know what? Break the rules. See what you learn. This is how writers become writers. And what we're doing here is a craft. I used to think that code and fiction had nothing in common, but we are both building something from nothing. And in our worlds, there is no win and no fail. There is only make. Thank you.